All right, we're ready to get started today on our project. So, hi, I'm Donnell McAdams. Uh, Megan's here with me, and we're hey. going to do a fall table runner today. And it looks like we've um, got our fabrics already set here, so I wanted to show you what we have. There is not a handout, and so I'm going to tell you what I'm using. And that way, if you're interested in doing something similar, you can write it down. So I have two pieces that are gonna be the ends of my table runner. And these pieces are 10 by 20. So you're gonna cut two pieces, 10 by 20. And I have them right here. And I've already put my fusible fleece on the back. Now you can use whatever you want. I like in my table runners to use fusible fleece. It's Pellon uh, 987F, and I've already fused that onto the back. And then this is gonna be the center of my table runner, and it's a piece that is 20 inches by 20 inches. So that was 10 by 20, and this is 20 by 20, and I have fused my um, interface, or Pellon um, fusible fleece on the back of that. Now the first thing we're gonna do with this piece is we are going to go ahead and we're going to embellish it with circles. And so we're gonna embellish that right now. And for those of you that have the tables with the holes in them, and I'll get it back here so you can see it. These are the holes in the table. I'll tell the fabric dimensions here in just a little bit again. So just remind me. But if you don't have holes in the table, remember you can get the universal circles and straights tool. So that's what the packaging looks like. This is the mat. You would take the back off and you would line it up so that right here in the, the foot area, it's lined up straight with the needle and out to the sides. It has to come right out to the left of the needle. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that on here. If you don't have a table, but you have a cabinet, you can obviously use this on the cabinet. And if it doesn't cling exactly the way you feel like it should, just put a couple little pieces of tape and you'll be fine with it. Now, if I was going to use this one as the one I'm actually doing my circles, I'm gonna peel off the back of my circles and straights tool. And you can see that is really, really sticky. And so when I peel this off, I can then use that. And if I wanted a seven inch diameter circle, I would line this up with the seven. You can see there's a line right there. I line it across this way and I line it in that position. So that's the way I would use that particular tool if I was going to be using um, a table that didn't necessarily have the holes in it. So that's the circles and straights tool. I can always adjust to different size circles. When I'm finished with it, I wanna put that little clear plastic piece back on there. And I'm gonna take this out because obviously I have a table that has the holes in it but I'm gonna just be able to put this back on there and I can roll it up and store it. Now, if it gets to the point where it doesn't cling, it's just like our grid glider mat, you're just going to rinse it in warm water. Now, if you have questions, please go ahead and insert them. I said I'm gonna tell the dimensions of my fabric again here in just a little bit. We'll let a few more people get signed first circle here. So what I have done, I have about six circles that are already prepared with fusible on the back. So I just selected some fabrics that went with the fabric that I had. And obviously I could have even used that dotted fabric that I'm using in the ends and um, made a circle out and on the back, I have put fusible. Now you see, I'm using heat and bond light and I'm using up my scraps. So this is a good way to use up your scraps. You're just gonna use your heat and bond light, the scraps that you have and put them together. You can see I've got two together right there, another two. And so these are the circles that I'm gonna do. 
And so the first one I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna use this fabric right here, and I'm gonna peel that back off. If you've never seen me do circles before, there's not really a pattern to what we're doing. It's just something that we kind of go by the seat of our pants. So I'm gonna take my piece that is 20 by 20. This is the middle of my table runner. Those of you that joined us a little bit late, let me show you again. These are gonna be the ends. Both of the ends are gonna be this fabric here. So I'm creating a fall table runner and um, we're gonna get going on embellishment here of the middle. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out that circle sewing tool. And this is what it looks like. If you've not seen one, you can see the two tabs underneath here. And then at this end, I have a thumbtack. And so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna set this down into position there. And I'm just selecting a spot. It doesn't really matter where you put it. I'm just gonna select a spot here and because I have that fusible fleece on the back, I don't need an interfacing. It's going to go right around without any kind of an interfacing, or excuse me, stabilizer. Whew, I've been at this too long, huh? And so when I put this on here, I need to decide, do I really want this sitting straight up and down? Do I want it a bit at an angle going across? I'm going to put it in here right like this, and I may have to scoot in because I don't have enough space. So let me move that in just a bit. Well, Sarah's really excited for today because she has wanted to do circles, so she hopes to learn some new easy ways for this. Perfect, this is gonna be fun then, because the first one that I'm doing here is obviously gonna be a littler circle. I place that underneath there, I put that on, and I'm finding the middle here. And I just wanna see, is that gonna rotate around? And yes, it is. So I wanna put that in like that. I'm gonna put my thumbtack in place. I have on this now, I have my applique or all purpose foot. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is we are going to sew a straight stitch. And it looks like maybe I could make that circle just a smidge bigger. Yeah, so I'm gonna do that. Set my foot down. And what I'm gonna be doing now, like I said, has really nothing to do with quilting, but we're gonna embellishment, embellish it with quilting. And I absolutely love doing these circles. So I'm just going around. You can see it's just necessary for me to pet the fabric a little bit right in front so that it will lay nice and flat. So Kate would like to know what thread are you using? Right now I am using a ray, or actually it's a polyester. It's actually an embroidery thread. Megan, I think you're gonna have to move that back there because my fabric's getting stuck on something behind my sewing machine. All right, I'm right back to where I started and I know you may not be able to see that circle real well, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this and I'm actually going to lift this off so that I can show you that I got right back to where I started and I'm going to use my little duckbill scissors. You can see my duckbill scissors here. And I'm just going up and around, and I like to go in this direction because of the fact that it will leave just a smidge of fabric on the outside of that stitching. And my next step will be, do I wanna use this same thread, which I am going to, that's why I picked this one first, to do my decorative stitch, because the next thing is a decorative stitch. So 
So I'm gonna be able to use a lot of different decorative stitches today. I can actually cut this better while I'm not talking. So I hope that you'll forgive me for not talking there. And so now I've got that nice, perfect circle. I'm gonna go back and find where it goes. And I'm just going to start, in this case, it doesn't really matter where I start. The thread is a gold brown color. So I'm gonna come into that rust color right there, except that's kind of like right at where the top is. So let's come around here where it would be on the side. And I'm gonna go in and select a decorative stitch. Oh my, my, which one should I choose? I've got so many of them here. Better do one that doesn't take a whole lot of time. So let's go to this menu and, ooh, I pressed the wrong one. We'll select, for the first one, we'll select this little diamond stitch. And so I'm going to go ahead and hold my thread out to the side. I don't need to bring anything up because I used my cutter. And I always like to put the needle down before I start. And so now we're just going to be stitching around with that thread. And it's kind of appliquing it down in place. Oh, I like this stitch. And I saw an idea similar to this, and that's why I decided to do this for today. We obviously won't get the project finished, but you'll have a good idea how it's going to work. So now that we've got more people on, let me tell you what I did. I cut two pieces, 10 by 20, are gonna be my end pieces. And Megan, maybe you can just show that in the hold it, those end pieces up here in the end. So that's what that fabric looks like. It's actually circles with a lot of little polka dots. And then by 20, and I have put heat and bond light on the back. Heat and bond fusible is on the back. And then this is a piece that is 20 by 20 that has the heat and bond on the back of it, or excuse me, I said heat and bond, I mean Pelon 987F. So two pieces, 10 by 20, and the center section is 20 by 20, and I put Pelon 987, which is a fusible. So you can see that I have done my decorative stitch here. I'm gonna press my finishing button, and it's gonna tie it off for me so that I don't have to worry about that. And now when I cut it, I can pull it out of my way and hide. So you can see those stitches. So question, if they don't have a, what'd you call that, a finishing? Oh, a, a finishing button? Yeah, what do they do if they don't have oh, a Oh, if you button? don't have a finishing button, then I would just stretch, uh, select it back to straight stitch and then just stitch a few stitches and then you can just cut those threads. So anything you can do to um, just kind of lock them in place. You could even use reverse, but I don't like to put more thread into it. So we could stitch more circles on top of this. We could come in and do a smaller circle. We're actually going to be embellishing with quilting with templates. So I'm just going to take this out here right now and just kind of rub my finger across where that center was and it's kind of going to go away. And then I'm going to come over here and remember there's no real rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I really am just guessing as I go, placing it wherever I want, and I'm going to pick a different fabric. And this time Looks like I only have the same options. They're all fell on the ground, it's okay. All right. So what I'm doing, for those of you, I actually piece these together with my extra pieces so that I can use up my heat and bond light. And it works really well that way. So I always just throw them in a little container off to the side when I'm 
finished with the bigger pieces and I have little pieces left. And so now I'm gonna take a time here and I'm gonna change my thread. And what do you think I should use, Megan? Something bright? Sure. Maybe th this one? Yeah. We'll use that thread on there. All right, because I've just picked out about six or seven colors over here. And we like to, you know, have a lot of colors in the fall. So, you know, the thing I notice about leaves is... So we're having some internet issues, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, just stick with us. So I'm going to go back to straight stitch. What I was saying is leaves are so pretty in the fall, but when you actually look at an individual leaf by itself, it's really not that pretty. So that's why I look at these and think all of the mix mixture of the threads and all the colors just really makes it that much prettier. So let's see here. There we go. I don't want to get the same size circle. Maybe I'll go a smidge smaller. And we're going to go ahead and set that foot down. Again, I'm back to a straight stitch, which, of course, the machine thinks is a straight stitch, but I'm going to be sewing in a circle. And those of you that were with me just a while ago, it started backing up because back behind my machine, I had something that my fabric was hitting on. So make sure you've got a clear pathway. And so I'm back to start. I'm going to touch that cut button, pull this out where I can actually get in there and cut this out. So Kate wants to know, is there a reason you use the scissors that you're using right now? It's just much easier to leave this nice little edge around here. Um, if you use regular scissors, you're going to have a little bit of a difficulty there. It's certainly fine. But if I was doing that here on the show, you would obviously be waiting a while because it, I have to go a much slower pace. These I can cut much faster and much more accurately. And also, the re one of the reasons that I put the fusible on the back is it makes this so much easier to cut because as you can see, the edges, it kind of seals them. You don't see any raveling out or anything like that. So it makes it much easier to uh, trim that off. But you want to leave a little, little bit of fabric around that outer edge there. Now, I will tell you right over here, I've got just a smidge too much. So I'm just going to go back and just cut off just a little bit of that. Hardly can even tell I cut it. All right. So now it's a matter of putting that back in, finding this, this, the spot that it goes in. And again, we're going to go in and we're going to select a decorative stitch. And let's see, this time, let's go with, oh, let's do this one right here. It's a little honeycomb stitch. So I am going to set my foot down, my needle down, and we're going to do that little honeycomb stitch. Ooh, that might not have been such a good idea. That's a pretty small one. So while we're first started, let's just stop that because we would be here for a long, long time. And fortunately, I didn't do enough of it that it's going to make that big of a difference when I select a different stitch. And of course, I could just select a satin and go right around there, but that's just a little bit too small of a stitch. So let's see here. We can even do words. This one has words on it. It has quilt and all kinds of things like that. Little umbrellas. Um, I'm going to stick with uh, designs so that we can. All right. This one will be one that will cover that up. So I got some questions. How's the time? Nanine would like to know if when you're using the yellow circle glider. I think maybe she means the circles. Straight tool. Yeah. You can't take it off when you are cutting, right? That's correct. 
that is a little bit of a disadvantage. However, you could, um, you're, you're gonna be able to rotate it around there. So the next one that I take out, I'll leave the pin in and do it that way so that you can see that. So it's like a simulation of if it was on that. So if it was, yeah, so it'd be like it's if it's on that. Yes, that is the difference there. Okay. And the scissors you've been using, Dolores would like to know again, what's the name of them? Mine are from More. You can get them by a bunch of different brands, but these are like the four and a half inch duck bill scissors. If you get the Fumore, this is the 712D. I think you can even see it right there on the handle of them. So you can see that's kind of a lacy look stitch coming around there. You, you can tell why I felt like it was. You can't tell the difference there from there because of the fact that it's got, it covered it up. But I could see that that first stitch was gonna take forever, and I don't want to do that. So if they come across one, they should know within the first couple of stitches if it's gonna take a long time. Right, and what I usually do is I keep a little scrap here and I stitch off a little scrap. Just sew a little stitch and see if it looks like it's gonna be okay. Oh, so in other that. words, yeah, just test it on a little scrap so you don't have to, to uh, be trying to take it out. Now, another thing, if you do a stitch and it kind of backs up and it stops and then it opens up and gaps, what you can do is you can actually leave that and then go around it again with a different color and it looks like it's a heathered stitch. So. If you have that happen to you, and I have, when I've gotten like halfway around a 12 inch circle, I had this big old bunch up, probably because it hit something behind my machine again. And so I had to do that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and trim this out. I'm getting close to being back where I began. And I kinda wanna watch it to make sure that I can get a good line up. It's on my foot control and it's going to finish that off. You can see it kind of hesitating there a minute. And then I just cut. So I've got two circles on here. Betty loves that stitch. She says it's so pretty. Yeah, it is a pretty stitch. You can see there what it looks like. So let's go over here again. No real rhyme or reason. And this time we're gonna use this fabric. Is one of those pieces bigger than the other? I think maybe this one might be. So I'm going to come up here. And I'm gonna put that in place. Oops, I need my fabric. What am I thinking? Obviously not. And I'm just reaching under there. And those of you that don't have a wish table, you may decide that rather than investing in that circles and straights tool, you just wanna go ahead and get a wish table because remember they're cut, custom cut for your machine. So all you have to do is tell them the make and the model and you can get one of those cut for your machine. Oops, not gonna get out that big. I should have cut some bigger squares. All right, we're gonna be okay. So let's go like that. I'm gonna switch threads again. And I've got a really pretty bright orange over here, or I've got brown, brown it is. You can see how much thought I put into that. And it's a brand new one, so I want to get in there and start it the right way. Don't want to just take a chance. And I am still using my top stitch needle, my 90 top stitch. And I'm even going to quilt with some of these threads. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set up. I'm so used to all my quilting techniques, I forget that I have to do some different things when I'm doing regular stitching. 
So, uh-oh, Donnell. I have a decorative stitch going without doing a straight stitch. Uh-oh. That would not be good. So Julie has the question, is there an adaptation for the wish table because her machine sits in a cabinet? Well, I pull my I pull my table or my excuse me, I pull my machine out of the cabinet and set it on top of my cabinet. So I totally understand and I've been there. I pulled mine out about five years ago and my machine has not been back in that cabinet since. Now I'm sewing right on top of it. So I have all the features of my cabinet. I'm just not using the part where the machine sits down in there. But I will tell you that once you get used to having this nice big flat surface that's smooth and slick and all of that, it just makes all the difference in the world. Now we've got a straight stitch so we can stitch our circle. I think you're gonna like what I end up doing with this today. It's really kind of random, fun. And is this gonna be unique. a two-part class? Well, I'll be pro well, I'm not gonna say. Maybe I'll, I'll, I don't know for sure, we'll see. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm cutting that and I promised Nanine that I would do this as if it was still attached to that. So I can still, against there without taking that off you can see i can do that and then i just rotate on that pen and that's why you want to make sure you put that pin more back on the thumbtack part so that it doesn't come off while you're rotating you can see you can still do that So now I'm back around. Let's select one more decorative stitch and see what we've got here. Oh, don't like those. Let's go back into here. This may be the hardest part of the whole thing. Yeah, is this is the, the hardest part, picking your selection of stitch because there's so many um let's see we've got more megan how about that let's Ooh, take let's this one. one i like this one and i'm going to actually mirror image it side to side so if you've never done that before the stitch is set up to come in the little design come in and i'm actually going to mirror image it so that it flips the other way so now we'll go right around here. Hopefully you can see that coming around. And on this one, I'm gonna do something really fun after we do this first time around. All right, so Simone is just joining us and she wants to know what the gadget with the pin is. So I think she might've missed the beginning. So this what... is the circle sewing tool that if you have a wish table, it's part of that. And if you don't, you can get what's called the circles and straights tool. And so it looks just like this. It comes in a package. You can see it there pictured and you would be able to lay it onto your uh, existing table or cabinet. And then if it doesn't cling, you can just use a piece of tape to hold it in place on either side. And Vera wants to know where can she buy that at? Well, they're available on the Sew Steady site. We always ask that you go to your store first but if they don't have it then you're going to um, uh, be able to order it right there now I just did the same thing because I came back to where I started and what I do is I'm gonna move this in two positions 
I'm gonna go to a different location because I don't want to have like two joins at the same place. And I'm going to take the mirror image off of this one and I'm going to do this again. And so I will have two rows that are the same center point for my circles. Judy would like to know, does the wish table have the circle sewing option included or is that an extra purchase? The wish table has it included. So when you purchase a wish table, you're going to get that circles and or that circle sewing tool. I have an extra one laying right here. This is what it looks like. It has two little tabs on the bottom that stick down into the holes in the table. And at the other end is that thumbtack. Now let me show you, I'm gonna stop here a second. When you get it, it's gonna come on this piece of corrugated cardboard. Make sure you keep it in that cardboard because when I turn it sideways like this, you can see those little pieces down there and that's gonna keep them good and straight. We're frozen. Our internet is really glitching up bad, and you're now frozen. It's not even restarting for them. So should we just hit finish? Well, if you want to no. finish it. It looks like it's coming back. Are you guys there? Is anybody thumbs up? You can push some thumbs up so we can see if we're there. Go ahead and keep sewing so it all right well hopefully we can get some th there's some thumbs okay, up we're getting them. all right so you can see this coming around but what i was telling you is store it back in that little spot oh thank you guys we're getting lots of thumbs up okay Okay, so ask some questions here because we got a little bit of an issue going on here and I need to check in my bobbin area to see what's going on. Okay, well I had a question back here. Is the wish table the same as the so steady table? The so it's the so steady wish table, yeah, it's the same. So they're they're extension tables that are sold by so steady. So I had a little issue back here, so let me see what's going on and let's get that straightened around. Thanks again for all your uh, patience. Yeah, we've had some flash sales today and we had some trouble with that. So we thought we changed devices, everything was cool, but obviously maybe not. So let me get my thread out. I think we're good to go again. The only thing I can think of is yesterday was the end of our nine weeks. So everybody's get on the internet yeah. trying to get their grades done. <laughs> I'm gonna put this here so you can see what we were doing. It actually just looks like I ran out of bobbin thread, although there was still thread on there. But we've changed, so we're, got, we're gonna get back in the swing of things here. And what I will do is I'm gonna look, and you can see that that stitch started down here and then went up. So I'm gonna find that same place because I will be reselecting that stitch and starting it again. And so when I do that, gotta find it first. I thought it was right in here. Maybe it's here. So you were asking for some questions. Um, We've got one from, I believe, Linda. She's got a wish table for her Bernina 750QE. Do you know if that one fits all of the 700 series? 
I would assume, but I'm not for sure. So I, I can't say for certain, but I would assume. I'm gonna set my foot back down and I'm gonna hope that I'm right in a pretty close place. If not, I'll correct it later. Okay, so I'm back. I'm gonna hit that, power, that stop button and I'm gonna cut it. And you can see it overlapped in not so good of a way. When I get finished with this, you're never gonna be able to see that. That's where I started, restarted, I should say. But I learned a long time ago not to be a perfectionist. It just takes too much of your life away. I could put some more on there. And I'm taking out my um, circles and, or excuse me, the circles and straights is the mat, but this is what I just took out here. That's that circle sewing tool. You can get the circle, the holes cut in. They are always cut into the wish tables. And if you just wanted a large table, I really wouldn't recommend that because I know how much I love my wish table. But if you want just the large, or maybe that's all the room you have, you can ask for that to have holes cut in it. You will need to purchase separately that tool because it doesn't come with that package. Now, I've decorated with three um, designs there, or three circles, and now what I'm gonna do while I still have this on there, I am going to put on just a regular thread because I had regular thread in my bobbin and I am going to stitch my ends to my mat here before I start embellishing. And I, I wanna do that mainly because I've got a foot on and I can just select my straight stitch and I can do that. So for those of you that are wanting the notes on what I've got fabric wise, I'm going to tell you again right now, this is a 20 by 20 square here. It has fusible fleece on the back. And I have two pieces, 10 by 20, that are going to be my end pieces. And they have the fusible fleece on the back. Now, I will be trimming the sides off later. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch... I'm going to actually just guide by the edge of my presser foot and I'm going to stitch those pieces together. So again, I put in some regular thread and I forgot to thread the needle. So some of you saw that. Oh, she got that already and didn't thread her needle. Now, yes, I could change to my regular presser foot, but this is gonna get the job done. And I'm gonna hand this off to Megan after I put the other one, and she's gonna press, in this case, the seams open. So we're gonna press the seams open Normally, when we're working with a quilt project, we would press them to one side, but this particular one has that fusible fleece, so I want to press them open. I got to sew the other one, Megan. Oh, okay. I was so excited. She was so excited to go press those open. And you can actually press the front also so that my circles are pressed down. Looks like we might have some frozen issues. We're just gonna keep going. Let us know when, when we come back on, I guess. All right. 
right, while she presses those seams open, I am going to change to my ruler work foot. And some of you guys out there are new this week because I think I've taught five classes and told every one of them about joining on Saturday night. And we all know there's more times to join and you can find that on the Sew Study page there. And if you set up for notifications, it will always let you know what's coming up next. So now what we're gonna be doing is we are going to have fun with template quilting. So I'm rethreading. I am using a top stitch 90 needle. Work, and we should be good to go. So the first one I'm going to do, many of you have seen and have the sampler set, and you have seen this particular design. It's Spinning Wheels 36. But you may not have known that Spinning Wheels 36 comes in more sizes. So I'm going to lay the sizes. You can see this great big one is 11 and a half. We've got a seven and a half. I'm going to be using the nine and a half today. And I am going to show you even smaller ones. This is five and a half and this is three and a half. So if you like that particular spinning wheels design, you're in luck because you can do that in all different sizes. So I'm gonna use, like I said, the nine and a half today. And it is one that I will need to use my larger. So I'm gonna come over here larger what your larger oh crosshair square i'm sorry my larger crosshair square yeah it'd be a good idea if i tell them what i'm doing right and so i just want to make sure it's going to fit on there and i am not going to do it dead center because that would just be too i mean just too much like uh what you might expect i guess is the best way to say it now i have used um Pounce iron off chalk. And so I'll be able to iron this off when I'm finished. But I think you can see that there. And I just need to get right dead center. Now, some of you have seen me do this, but many of you may not. So rather than put the thumbtack through that hole there, I can actually just put the thumbtack in a piece of my tape and I can put it right in the center there. And so now I don't have to put that up through my fabric. I can just tape it right in the center. And so when I use my template, I'm gonna come right in here. You can see I've got it taped so that's not going anywhere. And I'm just going to start here at A. There's an A and there's a B. And I'm gonna come down here and I am going to pull that thread up, floss underneath there so that I've got it and pull up my bobbin thread. Foot down and I'm just going to follow around that template. Stop at that point to the next one. Uh-oh, I think this one was made for a six point, which is okay. I think I can follow. It could be interesting, you guys. We'll see. It's working. But it looks like I am, yeah. There we go. This could be a challenge. I've not seen this before. I thought the last time I did it, it was 
a point, but I'll show you what I'm doing so that you know what's going on. On the template, there are actually some etchings, and I can use the... So I do have a question from Becky about needles. Is there a difference between needles and a top stitch 90 needle and a quilting needle or 14 needle? A little bit. And I will tell you girls, this is just not my day for demoing. This came out of place and that may be the whole problem. I need a new piece of tape, Megan. Okay. Oh, I thought I need to go get the tape. No, nope, I have the tape. So some of them are asking that you don't have backing yet, and you're quilting. Is that okay? You know what? That's why this happened. Because oh. I forgot my... Well, thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for letting us know that. What in the world was I thinking? You were just so excited about the quilting that you forgot. Yeah, well, you can try to make it like that, but... I will do my best. All right, so... A few questions... So I can rip this out real quick, and trust me, I can rip it out pretty quick. So hit me with questions, related or not related. Um, you are using a grid glider, right? <laughs> oh. Hey, all the questions are relating to things that we didn't do yet. <laughs> oh boy, you guys, this is great. I love it. Thanks, Jackie. That's funny. So yeah, let me just add the right things, such as a backing and a grid glider <laughs> and maybe figure out what I didn't do right on rotations and we'll be good to go again. But for those of you that have to rip out or you don't know the fast way to rip out, if you'll just go underneath your stitches and take about every sixth one of them you will find that you can go to the back and pull that bobbin thread and it'll just all pull right out. And you're gonna see here in a moment, everything goes as planned. That's a big LOL today. We will be able to pull those out. So I've just ripped about every six stitch around here and i had four of those lobes done it looks like <laughs> are they laughing at me no, no i'm laughing at you because uh, I'm, I'm loving their their comments um it's nice to see the professionals have issues oh yeah um it's nice to learn from them love to see you make little boo-boos too oh you just got to be patient you know life goes on like i said you can't be a perfectionist and have all everything work all the time and if you don't laugh at yourself then hey, you can't give anybody else any kind of grief down the road. I don't. I shouldn't say grief. That didn't now, sound I will right. Tell you, you'll, you'll love this one from Linda. Linda says home ec teachers are great at ripping out. <laughs> yeah, and you know I'll tell this because it's been a long time since I taught, but back in the day when I did teach school, I wouldn't let my kids rip anything out. I'd have them put it on the corner of my desk. You guys can see what I'm talking about here, how this is coming out. But I'd have it put it on the corner of my desk, and then I would spend my lunch hour while I ate ripping out their stuff because I had heard way too many stories about, I ripped out my zipper 13 times. My teacher never liked anything. And I thought, I am not going to have my kids remember that as their sewing experience. So... Um, I always did their ripping out for them. Now I did, I did teach them how to do it, but when it came to really doing it on their projects. Since we're forgetting some things, Janet says that sometimes she forgets to put her feed dogs down. So let's not forget to do that. <laughs> well, that's, that automatically happens on my machine. So that's one great feature. So you can see that didn't take a whole lot of time to rip out all of that, but you can see all of those threads there. Now, first of all, if they're all on the back, I don't even care. It's not gonna make me any difference. But what makes it easy to actually get them off of there is to use your lint roller. I'm losing everything down here on my floor. So, all right, I think we've got that out. Megan, go lay this over there and lay it out on the backing and put it in the center. 
while I check this template and see what on earth I did not do right. And it may, it may just be that I didn't have it in the right, that thing moved. So let me just see here a second. There was another question. Do all the templates come with that hole in the middle? No, this is just one of the rotational templates. Not all of them come that way. Yeah, I think I just had it so that that moved. So let's try again. Yeah. Oh, I'm not giving this to you until you put your grid glider on. Oh, yeah, there we go. So whoever mentioned that, thank you. We're a team. This is not in the center here. So let's get this head. Yeah. I mean, I just need enough to turn around for my border. For and my they're binding. interested to know what you're using for the backing. My backing is the same as this fabric, you guys. It's the same fabric. So I will be able to line everything up. All right, let's give this a whirl again, you guys. Thanks for being patient. Thanks for letting us have internet problems and staying with us. What do we have, Megan? Three people watching us now? They've all left for dinner? <laughs> no, no, they haven't left us. Good. All right. Maybe they'll come back. So, I got a new piece of tape. I'm putting that right there in the center. I'm going to get my template. And I'm going to put it in the hole. I'm going to check it first. I'm going to go around and back to this point. And then I'm going to rotate and see. Now it's in the right place. All right. So we're going to come into here. I've got it in my little hole so that it's going to rotate. I'm putting that foot down again, getting right in that starting point, needle down, needle up, and I'm going to pull up that bobbin thread. I'm going to get my backing on here so that I don't have any problems with it. Yeah, so all of you who are asking us about, why aren't you doing a fabric sandwich? This is why. Because <laughs> we just forgot. All right. We now have backing. Some of you are probably even yelling at your phone or your Computers saying, Donnell, what are you doing? Some of them are watching you while having dinner. You're oh. That, so. Your family should be thrilled. <laughs> All right. So we're making sure everything is nice and flat and lined up as we come around here. This is Spinning Wheels 36, and this happens to be, I think I said, yep, the nine and a half inch. So it's the same as the one in the sampler set, only it's a larger size. And for those of you that haven't seen us do this very much, I set my foot control on the floor around to the back and I set my speed to a medium so I can simply floor it. And I basically have created my own little stitch regulator because now I can get the hang of how fast to move my hands because I don't have to think 
about how I move my feet. I, or how far to push down on the pedal. Nancy wants to know, did you let us know what size your backing is? Oh, my backing is, um, um, 45 by 25. I did five inches extra in each direction. All right, so I'm going to raise my needle. I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread. I'm going to take this off so you can see what I'm doing here. So I pull that thread out and I come back to where I start and I put my needle back down, bring it back up. And this time when I bring it up and I've left my bobbin thread red so you guys can see the difference of it. The thread that is still pulling is the one that I'm going to cut. So I'm going to cut the top thread and the bobbin thread and then I will have all of my threads on the top that I need to work with. So I started out by bringing them up. So I have a bobbin thread here and a top thread and a bobbin thread and a top thread. And I hope I'm in the screen where you can see it. Let me come over here. I'm gonna tie it. And yes, it's on the top. It will be no problem because I'm gonna bury that thread. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave these a good six or eight inches long. And I'm gonna get out my cinch side threading needle. And for those of you that haven't seen it, this is what they look like, the package. And this is the eye. And you can see on the side, there's a little opening. So what I'm gonna be doing is taking all four of those threads and pulling them into that side threading opening. And then I'm going to bury it. It doesn't really matter where, but I'm gonna go right beside where the knot is. And I'm gonna come up a little ways. I'm gonna pull that through there. Can you believe that? Every single one of those threads came out before I put it in there. Well, yeah, it is crazy Saturday. So I'm pulling those through, getting a hold and pulling the tails. One decided he didn't want to go along for the trip, so he's going to make his own excursion. And now I will be able to, right there's my knot, and I just popped it right into there. So I can just come up here and trim those threads, and they'll go back in underneath there. And so I've buried them. You can't even tell that I had a red bobbin thread. So with that being said, you can see I've created something a little abstract. I've got a design right on there. Which Pat even said she loves that you did not put it um, dead center. Dead. Now you can if you want to. I'm going to... put my mat underneath here so that I can mark those lines off so you can see it a little bit better because those just iron press right off. The thing you need to remember is you're also fusing this down at the same time when you do that. So there we've embellished that one. And let's get something else over here and i think you're going to do it again so i'm just going to ask you to explain it janine wants to know why are you using the pink tape over the securing pin so this is my thumbtack and rather than bringing it up from the bottom i just left it on the top and that way i didn't have to push through all the layers you can do it either way i could have brought it up from the bottom but see my thumbtack there is through my tape and that way I could just do it on the top. You're gonna to have times when you're going to do something and your fabrics are gonna be so thick you're not gonna be able to have them, you know, have that thumbtack come up through from the bottom. All right, so let's get another one here, Megan. How about we do, uh, let's see, I'm not sure what this is. This is a Spinifex 14 and this is a seven and a half. So. 
I think we'll try it this way. So we're going to set this one a little bit offset this way. I'll set it straight up this time. But I think this is a fun way to not only get to try out or maybe use your templates more, but you can just kind of play with them and see what kind of designs you're going to get. So again, I'm just gonna use that same thumbtack and that same tape. And let's see here, there's my hole. Do I wanna spin it? Nope, I, you know what? I'm not gonna spin this one. I am actually just gonna rotate off of the center point here. Oh, let's get a different thread. We wouldn't wanna use the same thing. So, Arlene would like to know that marking tool you were just using. What is it? This right here is the Clover Choco Pen, and it fits perfect right down into the grooves of your crosshair square. And I have refilled it. As soon as I got it, I emptied out that chalk that it comes with, and I refilled it with Pounce Iron Off Chalk. So this time I'm going to use this bright orange thread. and get my needle threaded with that. And I can tell you, this is gonna come back so many times to the center that I really probably won't even have to tie it off, but I'm still going to bring up my thread so that I've got control of it. Use your buttons and whenever you rethread your machine, make sure that you raise the presser foot to rethread it because that's how the tension discs open. Now I haven't done any kind of sprain or anything like that or um, that it's um, puckered or anything like that. So we're just going to do this template here. We're going to move to the next line. And you can... If you wanted to make this heavier, you could always retrace each of your times around there. You could do it again, and I would do it right then. Don't wait until, oh, I think I'll go around it again, because then you gotta line everything up. So if I was gonna do it another time, I'd do it right now. And I'm lining up with my lines. I am using Spin Effects 14, size seven and a half. This creates such a cool inner design. You're gonna love it when you see it. Well, I might have some threads left when I'm finished, but I don't know, they're all falling on the floor. So here is the last one that I'm doing, and I want you to right here at this spot and right over there at that spot, because what it's gonna do is it's gonna brush by there, 
And when I get finished, you'll see how by lining this up every single time, I end up with an inside design. So now I'm going to raise my needle, raise my foot, pull this out, go back there in the center, put that foot down, put the needle down and bring that up. Pull up that bobbin thread and those two are going to get clipped. And so now all I have left up here are the threads that I need to tie off. So let me do that really because you really can't see anything until I get that out of there. So I'm going to take two in one hand and two in the other. And I know I said, well, you might just be able to cut them. I don't want to take that chance because I definitely want to be able to hide that knot. And I'm going to show you what happens when one of your threads is short. You can see that right here I've got one real short thread. The easiest way is then to take your knot and to, or not your knot, but your needle and put it in where you need it to be and then put your threads in that opening if one of them is too short. So let's go here. I want to make sure it didn't come out the back and oh no, it didn't. And then I'm going to take this right beside that opening. And this is literally what I have to do sometimes if I've cut my thread too short. There we go. And so then I can just pull that through. And right there in the center, I know you can't see it because there's a lot of thread, but my knot just popped underneath there. So I'm gonna trim that off. And there's the design that I get when I do that one. Remember, I offset it. Megan, you're gonna have to help me find my needle. While we're looking, you tell them they wanted to know what that was called again, the needle we were using. That's called a cinch side threading needle. And this is what the packaging looks like, the cinch side threading needles. We'll look for it later. Got it. Got it. That's good. All right. Oh, that's pretty. You like that? I do. I hope they can see it. You might want to hold up because I didn't get to see it, so... All right, let me hold it up here so that you can see that inside design. So you can see it right there. See how it meets in the center and forms that extra, actually a couple of different designs there in the middle. All right, so what I'm gonna do down here is I am going to pick another color of thread. I think I'll do this bright orange this time. It's more of a bright red. And what template should I do, Megan? Do you want me to do that one right there? Ooh, yeah, that'd be pretty. What's it called? This is called Spin FX 13. Okay, what size is it? Well, I have a seven and a half. And a nine and a half is probably too big. What did I lay out? Oh, what did you lay out? I am sorry. You laid out the five and a half. All right. So here's what we're going to do with this. Kind of like a little ear. This is kind of what the template looks like. I am going to do this one right in the middle. Pause. I'm going to show you how to use the circles on quilts template after that. So let's do this one right in the middle. Let's get this laid here and get my crosshair. This is the smaller crosshair and I want to see that I get it right in the middle there. And let's go this way.
All right, need our dead center. And you know, the funny thing is when you're doing something like this, you think, oh my gosh, you know, just a little tiny bit off is not gonna make that big deal. Oh, yes, it will. You wanna get things nice and squared up and centered if that's what you're doing. If you're random, obviously it won't make that big of a deal difference. But in this case, I need to see the packaging there a minute. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to be lining up. Let's get this up here first and pull up that bobbin thread. So we got some really creative people out there and they're asking, would this be a good um, project to simply quilting with? You surely could. You can add anything you want with it, that's for certain. So this one would be a good one that you could have some fabric behind there and cut it out. Now on this template, I'm going to turn it around so you can see it. There is a straight line out the top, and that's what I'm lining up with. And it's not going to matter whether I go around this first or this first. It really doesn't make one bit of a difference. And I'll just go ahead, since I've got it here, and start this. And I'm gonna go this way and I'm gonna pull it around so that you can see it. I'm lining up the straight line. I was like one stitch past, so I made it so I got right back on to the center point there. Pull my thread out of the way. Ooh, back there I can't hardly, I might need to get a ruler sticker. There we go. to know is there any difference between the crosshair ruler that you used that has the frame versus the one that does not have a frame no difference whatsoever um, it's just that mine doesn't have a frame I think mine didn't have a frame well, the one you used today did okay your bigger one but your smaller one that you've used does not have a frame okay my smaller one doesn't have a frame because that's the one I travel with and we just do everything we can to eliminate any weight and I don't think any of them come with frames now, but it doesn't matter one way or another whether or not you have a frame. Now what I'm gonna do right now, because this has got a little dead center, uh, I shouldn't say dead center, but a little bullseye like in the center, is I'm just gonna kinda go around in a circle and that will secure my threads and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut them and you will see that when I pull this out, right here in the center, I can then just trim these because they're all secured there in the middle. I pulled the ones up from the top when I started, so what went to the back is just secured and it's out of my way. Megan says, make sure I show you what it looks like. So you can see there that design. Now I could even take that same template if I had it, and I don't, but I could even take that same template and I could do it larger around the outside and maybe put it in between each of these. But what I'm gonna show you now is I am going to use this pin on top again. Again, I could bring it up from the bottom, but I wanna make sure I've got it dead center because otherwise it will be off. There we go. And now I'm going to use my circles on quilts template. And so I've got the set of four and I'm just gonna pick one here 
And we are going to make, in this case, a six and a half inch circle around this one. So I'm gonna come into this spot right here. I'm gonna set my foot down and I am going to be pushing against the bottom of this opening that's right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise that thread up put my foot back in place and put my needle down. Now, I do this different than a lot of people. Obviously, I'm rotating over here on the pen, but I sew from the outside in because I've fallen off too many times. I get to go in and I fall off. So this gives me a stop. So I'm just stitching and I stop and I move forward and I'm pushing the foot against this side because there is a little bit of a difference in that space. Can you explain what you mean by a little bit of a difference? The track is wider than the foot. So you can't go down the middle of the track. You've gotta to go to either the top or bottom part. It doesn't really matter which, but if you want it to meet back together, and I can't show you now, but I can show you when I get back to the beginning. And you'll notice I don't have any kind of stable tape on this because I'm actually moving it all the time. So I'm holding it in place. Now, when I come back here, I'm gonna get right back to where I started and I'm gonna pull my thread up. I'm not gonna take the time to tie it right now. But you can see I got right back to where I started. Now the reason I said that is, if I had pushed onto this side, it would have been higher out there. It would not have come right back to where it started. Now I've gotta pull my bobbin thread up so that I can tie it later. This time I do believe I'm gonna leave it just a little longer so that I don't have to worry with that. And so now these threads are the ones that I need to tie and I've got a circle around there. Now I'm gonna get a different template and instead of having the 6.5, I'm gonna to go to the seven. So I'm gonna find my one that has my seven on it. And there it is. And because it's a seven, so I'm right here, put that needle down, bring that up. Get ready, get my foot back here. It's walked away from me. And remember, I'm pushing on this side template. Well, that's great because you know what? At about an hour before this began, we were saying, hmm, what are we going to do? And I thought, you know what? I've been wanting a new table runner. I'm gonna put that underneath there to keep it out of my way. But you can see how you could easily fall off the other way. So that's definitely why I like to come this direction. So we're back to where we started. Needle up, foot up, pull it away. Come right back to that same spot. Needle down, needle up. This is something that long armors have done for years. And so this is an easy way to get those bobbin threads up and have control of everything right up on the top. So Becky has a question for us. She's wondering, why do you need that circle template? Why can't you just use your circle tool like we did at the beginning? 
You could, but you really can't get this whole mat to rotate. Okay, you notice that I did my circle before I put on these end pieces. So great question, but it's very difficult to get that mat to rotate, to get the whole thing to rotate. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to a, oh, let's see, I think I'll go to a nine inch circle, maybe a nine and a half. Let's see if I can do a nine and a half. Nope, that'll cut over my other design. So let's go to, Oh, the nine was on the same one I was using. And that's going to go right beside there, so that should be okay. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, I don't want to make it so that they're all lined up. I want to space them out, even though I don't think they're going to show. And... Oh, you're starting and stopping points. I was yeah, my starting and show. stopping points. Sorry about that. So I'm right in there, needle down, needle up, foot up. I got ahead of the machine, pull those out, put my foot back down, and I'm gonna be pushing against this side as I go around here. Now, could you plan all this out? You absolutely could. But mm, sometimes it's just more fun to wing it. And I think they were talking about your color circle, but I think that might be, if you'd ever do want to name this, it might be a good one. Pumpkin pie, table runner. We just got some mums a couple weeks ago. Megan and I went to look for mums. And one of the names on a, the mum was, the color was called pumpkin pie. And it didn't matter to us what color that was. We liked the name. And so we bought, I think, three of them that are pumpkin pie. And tell, I'm telling you, they are really pretty color. Okay, so we're back to that one. Needle up, pull away. And those of you that have been with me for quite a while, you know that I do this different than I used to. And this is much easier. We always learn as we go along what becomes easier. Because so I used to use a curved needle to bury, and now I found those cinch threading needles and ooh, ooh, side threading, I should say. And they are great. So... I'm going to pull this up, cut that thread, cut this thread, pull it in from underneath, and I'm going to pull all of these threads up here so they're out of the way. So you can see down here, now when I take this out, how I've put a perfect circle right around my design. I'm just going to pull it over so we can see Okay, it so they can see that. So I'm going to play with this, embellish it some more, add some more things to it, fill in some areas. I'm not sure. I think I'm going to do a one-inch grid, um, crosshair, gr or crosshair. I'm going to do a cross hatching with a one-inch grid down on this end. And I think I'll just go ahead and show how I start that, although some of you saw it last week. Um, and that way you'll know what I'm talking about and I'm gonna turn this around and I'm going to find the center. And so Megan, I'm gonna need one of my longer rulers for this so that I can show them. You know what? I know it's 20, all I gotta do is come to 10. Got it. Okay. All right, so if that's 10, that's not exactly 20. Okay, so let's go to nine and a half. And I'm gonna put a pen right there and see where we are here. Perfect. So that's gonna be my center spot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm making sure that everything is laying flat. 
and I'm going to put some pins in the corners here so that we can hold everything in place. And I'm just gonna simply take my crosshair square and put the zero or the center spot right at where the intersection is. And I am going to have that in there. So all I'm needing to do is draw, what happened to my, there it is, these two lines. So I've got those two lines there and I'm gonna connect it so that it's clear down here to the point. Question from sure. Ronnie wants to know why don't you just restitch over your starting stitches instead of tying and burying the thread? Because I don't like to have that heavier there. You can do that. That's that's totally fine. You can certainly do that. But I just don't like to have that heavier um, stitching there where it might look like the thread that was a heavier or you know a darker color or something. Now what I'm gonna be doing here is, I am going to start, I only need these two lines to get started, and I am going to take the other end of my project, and I'm just gonna fold it up like this. You can see I've got it all folded up here on this end, and what I'm gonna do is, if I can locate them real quick, is get a couple of my big Wonder Clips, yeah, well, that's not that. No, yeah, mm -hmm. you guys believe it. I can put my hands on them. Any of you that know me well know that that's just a minor miracle. So there's the two clip or three or four clips. My daughter's laughing harder than you guys ever will. No, I'm laughing at Marilyn. She says, just thinking of Halloween, Megan is your Igor and you are Dr. Frankenstein. She's always there to assist you. Okay. Not sure how to take that's okay. All right, so I'm coming down here to the end, and this is going to be underneath where my binding is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and just lower this, and I'm going to do what she had said, and that's just back and forth just a bit. And I need to make this so it's a quarter of an inch. So I haven't used a spacing gauge today, but I'm going to use one right now. And you can see I'm using my centering ruler because I've got stable tape on the back. And I'm going to stitch right on that line. Whoops, should have taken that pin out. And when I get to this point, I want to kind of reposition because it's been hanging off the table and I don't want anything getting messed up underneath there. And I'm gonna to come to this point right here. And when I get to that seam, I'm gonna stop right there and I'm gonna come back on this line. Now, like I said, this is where my binding's gonna be. So I've got like a quarter of an inch of a margin there. And so I'm just using my ruler so that I can come back. And at this point, I am going to actually even cut my thread because I'm gonna do a one inch thread. And those of you that were with me last week saw how we used our echo guides. So, I'm gonna take this 
and I'm gonna pull it underneath there. So I'm gonna come out here so you can see it. I'm gonna pull it underneath and I'm gonna set my foot down. Lift my foot up, whoops, didn't catch it. Lift my foot up and pull that echo guide up. And now, instead of having to measure each one of these, I'm just going to be guiding by the edge of my previously stitched line. So all you have to do are two lines to get started. So again, I'm out in that margin where my binding's gonna be. I'm lined up with my line. Now I could turn everything backwards, but I can not in reverse because I am the one in control. It's not like I set my machine in reverse, you guys. And so now I'm coming to the back. I'm looking behind, making sure I'm lined up. You probably mentioned this, but Peggy wants to know, what is that ruler called and is it the same thickness as the templates? It is the same thickness as the low shank template and you can use low shank templates on a high so yes, you could use that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just one stitch off. So I'm gonna go one more stitch. I wasn't actually in that seam. And now I'm lining this up. And again, remember, I don't have to use anything other than my ruler, my echo guide. And the reason I decided to use this, although I thought about using my scallop template on the big side, because this is obviously like scallops, I decided to use this is because I thought, oh, you know, Halloween, um, hay, straw, you kind of have that basket weave type thing going on. And so I thought the cross hatching would look really good in this case. So when I get down here again, it's going to be out in my binding area. I want to keep it good and flat. You probably can see my nose. I'm reaching through so much here, but I'm going to go in through that margin. And when this touches that thread there, I'm going to just line that up and go back the other direction. So Linda just wonders, why do you prefer to use Echo guides rather than a template ruler. Because I have to think about this and measure each time. Um, when I come here, all I have to do is match up that clear part with the seam or the stitching from before. So, like right there, I'm stitching in. I stitched right in that, and when this lines up, I'm good to go. It's just a time saver. Yes, that's why I made it this thick so you could use it on both. It's the same thickness as the bank templates. And it is available on my website. It, I don't have any distributors for it. And so you can get it on my website, which is sobizmarion.com. So now I'm up here and you can see when I turn this, I'm lined right up there. Yes. Oh, I don't have a question yet, sorry. So now that I'm all the way back up here, I need to get back down to here. Well, I don't know what, exactly what I wanna do. I really don't think I wanna stitch again in that ditch, although I can, or I could come around this outside edge because I'm working off of those lines. So I think it's gonna be easiest to stitch right back in this ditch. So at this point, I'm gonna line this up and I am going to use a measure here of one inch. So you've got your one inch measure. And so now I should be able just to guide right back along and stitch right in that 
ditch. So now I went a little bit too far. Let me go back. Well, you can see why I used it to stitch in a ditch. It's much easier if I have it there. What? So I think you get the idea of what this looks like to be able to do this cross hatching. So I'm just gonna continue. If you have any last minute questions, go ahead and ask them now and we'll just sign off with me stitching. See y'all later. Oh, as they're jumping off, Janet does want to know, how are you going to do the binding? We'll show it next week. We'll show that next week, how we're finishing it. <laughs>